It's time to go there and back again, and again, and again, and again. This is Neon, this is Clownfish TV, and this is not surprising at all. Warner Brothers is going to do new Lord of the Rings movies. Yes, nobody wanted these. <laughs> nobody is asking for these, especially after the Amazon series, but there it is, guys. New Lord of the Rings movies are coming, probably for a, probably for a modern audience. Uh, however, Peter Jackson is in the loop, you know, so it basically is going to be like all the filler in The Hobbit, but yeah, just more movies of that, right? I think that's what they're going to do. I have zero, less than zero interest in this, but we're going to talk about it because it's pretty big news. Uh, I guess this is what happens when you sell off to the Embracer group. I don't know. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 295, almost 300,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, we've kind of, sort of talked about the Amazon Lord of the Rings. We've talked about the disaster it was with fans. Uh, the disaster it was from, from a ratings point of view, given the amount of money they spent on the show. And I don't care one way or the other. I, I really, truly don't. Uh, I didn't even care about The Hobbit. I watched each of The Hobbit movies once. That was enough for me. There was one good movie in there, but you would have to cut out like four hours of crap <laughs> to get to that good movie because there was a lot of bloat. And that is uh, apparently what the Amazon series was. And I was not going to subject myself to that when I can watch reruns of like Star Trek The Next Generation or something uh, and actually enjoy my time. But uh, here we go, guys. Warner Brothers, because they're desperate for money, announces new Lord of the Rings movies are coming. The, the news comes in the wake of Amazon's TV adaptation. That's what they're calling it. They made it up whole cloth, right? Less than a year after the first season of Amazon's TV series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, The Power of the Rings of the Lord, concluded more content. Content, that's all it is now. It's content, guys. Not literature, it's just content. More content based on J.R.R. Tolkien's beloved fantasy universe is coming from a different studio in a different medium. Anybody who wants to make a Lord of the Rings something can do it for the right price, right? Warner Brothers Pictures announced Thursday it signed a multi-year agreement with Embracer Group to produce more films based on the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Again, this is what happens when you sell your baby. New Line Cinema, which produced Peter Jackson's acclaimed Lord of the Rings film trilogy in the early 2000s, is also part of the deal as a film label of Warner Brothers uh, Jackson and New Line went on to adapt The Hobbit into a less acclaimed film, film trilogy of the 2010s. This is going to be even less acclaimed than that. I can almost guarantee it. 20 years ago, New Line took an unprecedented leap of faith to realize the incredible stories, characters, and world of The Lord of the Rings on the big screen. And they were mostly successful. The result was a landmark series of films that have been embraced by generations of fans, said Warner Brothers Pictures executives Michael DeLuca and Pam, Pam Abdi. But for all the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by Tolkien remains largely unexplored on film. Uh, probably. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they're going to make a bunch of stuff up. It's not going to be. It's going to be Tolkien-esque. It's going to be Tolkien adjacent. It's not going to be actual Tolkien. And they had to wait for Christopher Tolkien to die before they could strip mine. Uh, the Tolkien estate. The opportunity to invite fans deeper into the cinematic world of Middle Earth is an honor. And we're excited to partner with Middle Earth Enterprises and Middle Earth Enterprises and Embracer on this adventure. A conglomerate. And remember, Embracer Group guys, a lot of people were rooting for them. They're like, they're the good guys. No, Embracer Group owns limited run games and they're the company that was uh, you know, behind the one community manager getting fired just for liking Hogwarts Legacy. But now they're working with Warner Brothers. So I'm really confused. I got to tell you. I really got to tell you. This is bizarre. Shouldn't they? Wait, shouldn't Embracer Group? Shouldn't Embracer Group not work with Warner Brothers because they produce the Harry Potter movies and they produce the Harry Potter games? Why, why is, why is, if they're the good guys, why is Embracer Group working with Warner Brothers? That's what I want to know. What exactly this means is quite unclear. The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit have obviously already been adapted in the movies. That means we're going to make stuff up, guys. We're going to make it all up. Amazon based the Rings of Power on Tolkien's appendix to The Return of the King, which he included notes about the Second Age of Middle-earth. Uh, neither Warner Brothers nor Embracer make any mention of The Cimmerillion, the only Tolkien Middle-earth novel that has not yet been strip-mined. 
for the screen. Amazon purchased the TV rights. They made up a whole freaking thing that had nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. Um, following our, and this is Embracer, right? Following our recent acquisition of Middle Earth Enterprises, we're thrilled to embark on this new collaborative journey with New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers Pictures, bringing the incomparable world of Tolkien back to the big screen in new and exciting ways. We understand how cherished these works are, and work, working together with our partners at New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers, we plan to honor the past, look to the future, and adhere to the strongest level of quality and production values. That might be a knock, actually, at Amazon, because a lot of people said that the costuming did not look good in The Rings of Power compared to the original movies. Uh, as for Jackson, Thursday's news left many fans wondering whether they might be reteaming with the original director of the studio has yet to announce any potential creative teams. But in a statement to EW, Jackson and his writing partners, Fran Walsh and uh, Philippa Boyens, said they're keen on learning more. Well, they wanted to be involved in the Amazon show, too, and then they cut them out completely. Uh, Warner Brothers and Embracer have kept us in the loop every step of the way. We look forward to speaking with them further to hear their vision for the franchise moving forward. I don't think this is good news, guys. I mean... Look, everything that was once a, an original creation in the 20th century is being strip mined as corporate IP in the 21st century, right? I mean, Star Wars. And I think a lot of people were hoping this would happen to Harry Potter too, that they could have Harry Potter without uh, J.K. Rowling. And we're seeing Dr. Seuss. We did another video talking about how they're doing sequels to Dr. Seuss now. It's just IP. That's all it is. It's content. They, they literally call it that. They're like, we know these books are beloved, but content, content, content. Movies that make money. Gotta make money. Warner Brothers needs money. So what are you gonna do? Oh, we're gonna do more Lord of the Rings. That's what we're gonna do. Well, we already told that story. Well, we'll just we'll just tell it again. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just somehow Sauron returned. That's how, that's the next movie. It's going to be called Somehow Sauron Returned. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Not much news on it yet. I'm just, I don't even know what to say anymore. This is dead on arrival. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.